Yashar, Jasher 52. And they entered their house, and every man opened his sack, and they saw, and behold, every man's bundle of money was there, at which they and their father were greatly terrified. And Yaakov said unto them, What is this that you have done to me? I sent your brother Yosef to inquire after your welfare, and you said unto me, A wild beast did devour him. And Shimon went with you to buy food, and you say the king of Mitzrayim has confined him in prison. And you wish to take Binyamin to cause his death also, and bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to Sheol on account of Binyamin and his brother Yosef. Now therefore my son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone, and mischief may befall him by the way in which you go as it befell his brother. And Reuven said unto his father, You shall slay my two sons if I do not bring your son and place him before you. And Yaakov said unto his sons, Abide ye here and do not go down to Mitzrayim, for my son shall not go down with you to Mitzrayim, nor die like his brother. And Yahuda said unto them, Refrain ye from him until the grain is finished, and he will then say, Take down your brother, when he will find his own life and the life of his household in danger from the famine. And in those days the famine was sore throughout the land, and all the people of the earth went and came to Mitzrayim to buy food, for the famine prevailed greatly amongst them, and the sons of Yaakov remained in Canaan a year and two months until their grain was finished. And it came to pass after the grain was finished, the whole household of Yaakov was pinched with hunger, and all the infants of the sons of Yaakov came together, and they approached Yaakov, and they all surrounded him, and they said unto him, Give unto us bread. And wherefore shall we all perish through hunger in your presence? Yaakov heard the words of his son's children, and he wept a great weeping, and his pity was roused for them. And Yaakov called unto his sons, and they all came and sat before him. And Yaakov said unto them, And have you not seen how your children have been weeping over me this day, saying, Give unto us bread, and there is none. Now therefore return and buy for us a little food. And Yahuda answered and said unto his father, If you will send our brother with us, we will go down and buy grain for you. And if you will not send him, then we will not go down. For surely the king of Mitzrayim particularly enjoined us, saying, you shall not see my face unless your brother be with you. For the king of Mitzrayim is a strong and mighty king. And behold, if we shall go to him without our brother, we shall all be put to death. Do you not know and have you not heard that this king is very powerful and wise and there is not like unto him in all the earth? Behold, we have seen all the kings of the earth, and we have not seen one like that king, the king of Mitzrayim. Surely amongst all the kings of the earth, there is none greater than Avimelech, king of the Peleshitim. Yet the king of Mitzrayim is greater and mightier than he. And Avimelech can only be compared to one of his officers. Father, you have not seen his palace and his throne and all his servants standing before him. You have not seen that king upon his throne in his pomp and royal appearance, dressed in his kingly robes with a large golden crown upon his head. You have not seen the honor and glory which Elohim has given unto him, for there is not like unto him in all the earth. Father, you have not seen the wisdom, the understanding, and 
the knowledge which Elohim has given in his heart, nor heard his sweet voice when he spoke unto us. We know not, Father, who made him acquainted with our names and all that befell us. Yet he asked also after you, saying, Is your father still living, and is it well with him? You have not seen the affairs of the government of Mitzrayim regulated by him, Without inquiring of Pharaoh, his lord, you have not seen the awe and fear which he impressed upon all the Mitzrayim. And also when we went from him, we threatened to do unto Mitzrayim like unto the rest of the cities of the Amorim. And we were exceedingly wroth against all his words which he spoke concerning us as spies. And now... When we shall again come before him, his terror will fall upon us all. And not one of us will be able to speak to him, either a little or a great thing. Now, therefore, Father, send, we pray, you, the lad, with us, and we will go down and buy you food for our support and not die through hunger. And Yaakov said, Why have you dealt so ill with me to tell the king you had a brother? What is this thing that you have done unto me? And Yahuda said unto Yaakov his father, Give the lad into my care, and we will rise up and go down to Mitzrayim and buy grain, and then return. And it shall be when we return, if the lad be not with us, then let me bear your blame forever. Have you seen all our infants weeping over you through hunger, and there is no power in your hand to satisfy them. Now let your pity be roused for them and send our brother with us and we will go. For how will Yahuwah's kindness to our ancestors be manifested to you when you say that the king of Mitzrayim will take away your son? As Yahuwah lives, I will not leave him until I bring him and place him before you. But... Pray for us unto Yahuwah, that he may deal kindly with us, to cause us to be received favorably and kindly before the king of Mitzrayim and his wise men. For had we not delayed, surely now we had returned a second time with your son. And Yaakov said unto his sons, I trust in Yahuwah Elohim that he may deliver you, and give you favor in the sight of the king of Mitzrayim and in the sight of all his men. Now therefore rise up and go to the man and take for him in your hands a present from what can be obtained in the land and bring it before him. And may El Shaddai Elohim give you mercy before him that he may send Binyamin and Shimon, your brethren, with you. And all the men rose up, and they took their brother Binyamin, and they took in their hands a large present of the best of the land. And they also took a double portion of silver. And Yaakov strictly commanded his sons concerning Binyamin, saying, Take heed of him in the way in which you are going, and do not separate yourselves from him in the road, neither in Mitzrayim. And Yaakov rose up from his sons and spread forth his hands, and he prayed unto Yahuwah on account of his sons, saying, O Yahuwah Elohim of heaven and earth, remember your covenant with our father Avraham. Remember it with my father Yitzchak. And deal kindly with my sons and deliver them not into the hands of the king of Mitzrayim. Do it, I pray you, O Elohim, for the sake of your mercies and redeem all my children and rescue them from Mitzri power and send them their two brothers. And all the women of the sons of Yaakov 
and their children lifted up their eyes to heaven, and they all wept before Yahuwah and cried unto him to deliver their fathers from the hand of the king of Mitzrayim. And Yaakov wrote a, wrote a record to the king of Mitzrayim and gave it into the hand of Yahuda and into the hands of his sons for the king of Mitzrayim, saying, From your servant Yaakov, son of Yitzchak, son of Avraham the Ivri, the prince of Elohim, to the powerful and wise king, the revealer of secrets, king of Mitzrayim, greeting, be it known to my lord, the king of Mitzrayim, the famine was sore upon us in the land of Canaan, and I sent my sons to you to buy us a little food from you for our support. For my sons surrounded me, and I, being very old, cannot see with my eyes. For my eyes have become very heavy through age, as well as with daily weeping for my son. For Yosef, who was lost from before me, and I commanded my sons that they should not enter the gates of the city when they came to Mitzrayim on account of the inhabitants of the land. And I also commanded them to go about Mitzrayim to seek for my son Yosef. Perhaps they might find him there. And they did so. And you did consider them as spies of the land. Have we not heard concerning you that you did interpret Pharaoh's dream and did speak truly unto him? How then do you not know in your wisdom whether my sons are spies or not? Now therefore, my lord and king, behold, I have sent my son before you, as you did speak unto my sons. I beseech you to put your eyes upon him until he is returned to me in peace with his brethren. For do you not know, or have you not heard, that which our Elohim did unto Pharaoh when he took my mother Sarah and what he did unto Avimelech, king of the Peleshitim, on account of her, and also what our father Avraham did unto the nine kings of Elam, how he smote them all with a few men that were with him, and also what my two sons Shimon and Levi did unto the eight cities of the Amorim, how they destroyed them on account of their sister Dina, and also on account of their brother Binyamin, they consoled themselves for the loss of his brother Yosef. What will they then do for him when they see the hand of any people prevailing over them for his sake? Do you not know, O king of Mitzrayim, that the power of Elohim is with us, and that also Elohim ever hears our prayers and forsakes us not all the days? And when my sons told me of your dealings with them, I called not unto Yahuwah on account of you, for then you would have perished with your men before my son Binyamin came before you. But I thought that as Shimon, my son, was in your house, perhaps you might deal kindly with him. Therefore I did not this thing unto you. Now therefore, behold, Binyamin, my son, comes unto you with my sons. Take heed of him and put your eyes upon him, and then will Elohim place his eyes over you and throughout your kingdom. Now I have told you all that is in my heart, and behold, my sons are coming to you with their brother. Examine the face of the whole earth for their sake, and send them back in peace with their brethren. And Yaakov gave the record to his sons into the care of Yahuda to give it unto the king of Mitzrayim.